Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Adam J. Pestridge. Welcome to another P3D video, Flight Simulation. This video, we're talking all about the CPU and how you can manage it and uh, run it to be more efficient and performance to be better in your sim. So don't just hate it when, you know, your PC is acting like a bag of potatoes, you know, and you just uh, struggle with frame rate no matter what options you choose and you have your sliders all the way down and it's still running like a bag of potatoes um well you know luckily with p3d flight simulation there are certain things uh, that you can do to really help yourself uh have the performance in your pc even if you have got a bag of potatoes to be honest there are certain things you can do for your memory, for your GPU, and your CPU. And this is kind of like a little trilogy of videos that I've been putting together. One that uh, makes your memory run smoother, cleans it out uh, with every five minutes. There's a like a, a, a job scheduled process that runs and i've done a video to that and i'll link it down below uh there's also something for your gpu if uh, especially in version 5 um if it bites it early um and it hangs and it's taking longer than two seconds to hang there is something you can do just to delay it by eight seconds to give it enough time to recover and so you don't actually crash the sim and that's a, there's a gpu fix and again i'll put that down in the description box and now finally we get to the cpu the cpu is the core of your machine really not your flight sim really i would say that's the gpu but the core of your cpu and you know you want it running really well um and luckily modern flight simulators like x-plane and microsoft can actually manage multiple cores uh take advantage of all your cores on your cpu p3d unfortunately doesn't do that it's a offshoot ancestral you know program from fsx so uh fsx was is really a single core uh program and really only takes advantage of like the one core now there are cheats and hacks that you can do with infinity mask and hyper threading that can actually then split that over multiple cores but it still only really takes advantage of one core but p3d especially in version 5 will actually really nail two cores and then sort of you know hit the rest at like the half level which i think is super helpful um as a flight simmer because it helps manage the cores even better. So if we if we have a look at mine, bringing up the, um, the, the, the task manager with the performance here and clicking CPU, you can actually see all your cores that are on your PC. I have, as you can see, eight threads uh, with four cores. Um, and I can see the usage and the utilization of each and every single one. Um, at the moment, it's running at 4.86 gigahertz. Um, I overclock my CPU to 4.9. Um, I've got the i7-700, as you can see here. It's an Intel CPU. Um, I think Intel are better streamlined for P3D because P3D effectively is FSX2. The internal core structure of P3D is still FSX. And FSX was built primarily on the Intel and Nvidia hardware and it is more optimized on those hardwares uh, not to say that uh, Ryzen or AMD or Radeon or anything like that can't run the P3D program they can but the software will take better advantage of the hardware for Nvidia and Intel and I always stick with Intel with P3D and uh, to be honest I never have a problem with my CPU it never runs about higher than 60 percent to be honest um, unless i'm doing streaming on the same pc 
um, that will always stay within 60 to 70% of the CPU usage. And some people might go, well, that's not taking full advantage of your CPU, mate. And I'll be like, yes, but I want my CPU to last me a while. I don't want it to bite it after a year because I nail it on 100%. Guys, it's never good to run your CPU for extended periods of times at like 90%, okay? Some people who say that that is a good idea just don't have a clue of what they're talking about. They've just regurgitated something they've heard. Okay, it's not a good idea to run your CPU full throttle all the time. Same with your GPU, in fact. You can only, Hussein Bolt can only run so far, uh, so fast, you know, and then he tires out. And it's the same with hardware. It can only run full throttle for such a length of time, and then it's going to crap out. So um, how can we better utilize uh, the CPU for flight simulation? Well, Basically, P3D will only hammer the first two cores, really, and that's it. Full utilization on two cores. Um, the rest of the, the or the, or two threads, as it were. One, it's a one core sim, which is two threads, sorry. Um, the rest of them will kind of just lazily run, meh, 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 you know? It <laughs> won't do much, to be fair. Um, but what we can do, because, like, guys, we run, how many programs do we run these days for flight simulation? I mean, I run Pro ATC, Skyforce, Active Sky. I run Self Loading Cargo, Ultimate Crew, Project Fly, The Sim, and then Navigraph at the same time. That's like seven to eight programs apart from my Sim. And that's a lot of CPU power. Now, Windows only actually requires one to two gigahertz to work on your PC. I have 4.2 at the base. So a quarter of my CPU will actually healthily run uh, the Windows 10 operating system. Um, and other programs, some, some of them even require less. You know, uh, some require more. P3D, I believe, requires 4.0 uh, at a base minimum to successfully run with all your add-ons running as well. Um, anything lower at your base speed at 4.0 and you're really going to struggle to run your PC. So if it's like 3.8 or 3.7, try and overclock it to at least 4.0 and then at least you know you, you can run it smoother than you will have done in the past. That's not to say that 3.8 won't run the sim, but it'll run it smoother if it's over 4.0 gigahertz. And this is just to what I've come to know over years of testing okay um so how can we utilize well how can we utilize our cpu to make the flight sim smoother personally i use a program called P process lasso process lasso is a cpu uh enhancing or uh, utilization tool whatever you want to call it um here is the link here is the website i'm going to put the link to this in the video description um, it requires a single workstation pc license now if you have two pcs and you stream or you have your weather programs running off another pc to save performance which i i really strongly advise um, you have to actually get the unlimited pcs in the same home option which is 2631 uh, pound sterling um, the single if you've only got the one PC and you're never going to get another PC you only need to get the single use which is 1878 and that's all you'll ever have to pay it's a lifetime one-off payment okay you don't it's not a monthly or anything like that so you don't have to worry about that okay um, they probably do have monthly options yes they do but trust me go for the lifetime sorry sorry it's 2710 for the single pc lifetime and it's 3462 you want the lifetime trust me it's so much easier okay this program is like the best thing to run for flight simulation okay now when you open it when you first download it install it you're gonna go oh my gosh what the is going on look i've got two processes of p3d are still clocked in does windows say that see i find this that sometimes windows isn't reporting everything if we scroll down no there is no process of p3d running at all it's not reporting that p3d is running but process lasso 
it says there's two programs here, P3D still locked in, running off the CPU. How interesting. Nuke them. Um, I'm also going to get rid of the Origin Web Helper. I don't actually need that running now. And uh, the Adobe Update Service. That doesn't need to run while I'm flying in Flight Simulation. That's basically it. This really helps you remove processes that don't need to be running when you're flying. Unfortunately, uh, Office, you can't get rid of it. It's, it's greased in. Right, so how do you set this up to take the best of flight simulation? Well, I'm gonna show you right here. First off, bring up your control panel. Don't bring up the old, well, it's not old, but you know, the scabby windows one. Forget that, that's just a meme. This one, have this one at hand. This is your, this is the real control panel. So much better. And you wanna to go to hardware and sound, power options, and you want to make sure you're on the Bitsum highest performance, okay? Um, don't worry about any other one. This one is the profile, and you want to change your plan settings and make sure your display and your complete, your computer will never go to sleep on you. Click advanced power settings, and this little box will pop up. Now, these are optional, so but you will get better performance out of your PC if you do this, but this is optional. Turn off hard disk after zero minutes. You don't want that doing anything. I'm just going to actually tick through all these. Um, maximum performance for JavaScript, Internet Explorer, desktops. I don't actually, I didn't actually change this one, but pause it. You know, um, wireless adaptive settings in the maximum performance power saving mode. The sleep, you don't want your PC going to sleep on you ever. So make sure it says never and disable the wake up timers. Uh, USB settings, suspend the disabled, so selective suspend setting, sorry, is disabled. You do not want your USB drives that are connected suddenly losing power and just, you know, going bye-bye um, and disconnecting. You want to turn your uh, PCI Express state power management off so nothing is regulating anything. Um, process power management, set this to 100% at its minimum and active on the system cooling policy. So this will actively cool your CPU and 100% maximum. I mean, you can't get more than 100%, can you? So turn off display, never, and multimedia settings. These don't apply. Click o apply to there and okay, and come on out. And now you just set up your PC with Process Lasso. Now, this is where it gets interesting. As you can see in the top corner here, we have, these are my threads, uh, eight threads I've got, and that's my memory allowance as well that I have. So right now my memory is about 25% and all my threads are sitting pretty, um, barely doing anything to be honest. In fact, there's no process. If you if we look at the utilization graph, which uh, should be here, there it is, the CPU utilization graph, graph. Under active processes, there is actually nothing really heavily running on the PC. Now, if I had a virus on my PC, or if I had some sort of hackware that was skimming my details, taking up performance from my PC, you would actually see like a green bar going across and go, oh, what's this thing that's taken all my power away from my PC. You could actively see it. So, I mean, not only is this a great P PC CPU utilization tool, uh, which will then make your sim run smoother with better frames, but it, it you kind of can keep an eye on what your CPU is doing. Like, who's using the most of my CPU? Right now, uh, OBS isn't actually doing hardly anything, to be honest. What it should be, to be fair. Um, even if I brought up the utilization here, which uh, I'm sure it's there, I can't be bothered to look. Um, these these are just all the processes that are running on your PC. These are the ones that are actively running right now. So you really wouldn't have many until you started loading things up. So now we can start managing. So first off you need to do is right click, uh, sorry, uh, highlight all the processes that you want to manage and then right click on it and go to pro CPU affinity, always and select CPU Affinity, and you'll have this box pop up. Now, right now, OBS is running on all my cores, which we don't want that happening. I'm actually gonna take the first five off. 
yeah, first uh, the first five. And I'm only going to allow OBS to actually utilize these last three right there. Um, OBS actually like it can be CPU intensive, but doesn't actually need that much uh, CPU. Now you can see in here, these have creeped up. And that's OBS using them uh, and not using these. So it instantly happens. Um, I'm also, I do have Discord open. So I'm going to actually set that as well and uh, make sure that Discord is also not on the first four cores. Now, if you, it's going to really depend on how many uh, cores. In fact, I'm going to select these three instead of them. And that way it manages a little bit better. Actually, you can have them three. Depends on how many uh, CPUs that you'll have. Uh, if you've got 16 threads to play with, you'll have a lot more options to manage your CPU. I've got eight myself, and you might even only have four. Um, but this will really help you manage your CPU load. So let's uh, load up the sim. Unfortunately, everything has to be running in order to, for you to do this next step, which is basically managing the load on your CPU. And what we want is we don't want your CPU bottlenecking your system. We want an even load across the CPU. And that way the utilization is better because a high utilization or a high usage of your CPU does not mean it's performing well. Um, it actually means you're more likely to get bottlenecks in your CPU and for crashes to occur. You know, you don't want your CPU maxed out all the time. You're going to come into problems. So if we can get our CPU usage down to 60% when we're flying, then actually, for me, I believe that is the peak uh, utilization usage for your CPU for now and moving off in, into the future. So you don't really have to wait for the program to load. You just literally click on the program. So P3D. If you click on process name, they'll tend to not jump about as much and it'll make your life a lot easier. But obviously they will move when things start loading in. So uh, always uh, select CPU infinity. And as you can see, I've got my, pro, my um, P3D running off the first five um, of my CPUs and leaving these last three free and it's these last three where all my add-ons are actually going to be shared so that's the sim done um chase planes just popped up so we need to do chase plane now well chase plane isn't that an intensive program so to be honest you can get away with just giving it two it doesn't really need a lot of power to run um, in fact if you really wanted to um be sort of like confident in which how many cores you want to select go over to the website of of the, the manufacturer and just see what the recommended specs are and look at the how many gigahertz it really says it needs to run on because if it's literally just one then that for me is two boxes so i'm just going to allow chase plane to utilize one core and that is it uh, there is a bridge program somewhere and it's advisable to find it and do that as well. But I don't think there it is. It stays open forever. But um, it doesn't matter if you're uh, doing this, by the way, in the all processes or the active. Um, it's easier uh, and more manageable to do it under active, but it really doesn't matter. All right, there we go. That's Chase Play and Bridge done. And literally, all you want to do is whatever app or whatever thing that you use to go flying with you want to load it up now um, so you can actually set your cpu infinity see navigraph was running on all these cores so let's just get rid of that and what i tend to do um, is put the processes on the cores and then keep P3D on its own and for some reason P3D likes to nail core zero uh, for some reason um, so threads one and two make sure that P3D has the exclusive use of just those two cores because it will nail them and if you've got other processes running on those cores as well then it's all going to be stressed to, you know so it's it's best to just uh, let uh, let P3D have exclusive access of half your cores, basically, and make it the first half. So Pro ATC, you can have these three. And and I try and spread them out so they're not all bottlenecked on the same. 
Obviously, we're not actually going to be flying anything, so we don't need to really worry about what we're loading. As long as you load what you're going to fly with in your sim, you don't need to do every single program that is on your PC. But, um, I mean, I suppose it couldn't hurt, could it? CPU Infinity, select CPU. Yep, Active Sky, you can have four because you are a bit of a meme. Um, self loading cargo. Oh, oh Coatl. That pain in the butt for some people. You can have. Yeah, you can't have that many mates. That's taking liberties there. You can have four. No, you can have three, mate. You don't. You don't run that much, to be honest, mate. Um. You're just a tracking software. One thing I find as well, if you've got tracking software where it's only really tracking information, it doesn't take a lot of power resources to to manage that. So you can actually give that quite a lot less. And it oh, ultimate ground crew, um, and it would still work fine. Um, as you can see, even though I'm running all this stuff, my CPU usage is in the toilet right now. It's not even crawled out to say hi. Um, and what we will do is I will load up a flight um, that you can be watching and we'll track. Yeah, that's fine. And we'll track the usage. So now the last thing to do is go on, click on prepared. And you only really need to do this with prepared. You don't really need to do this with all of them, but click application power profile and make sure it's on bit some highest performance. You don't really need to do that for all the others. You can, but... Um, yeah, it's it's not necessary. It's not like you've got to do it. Um, but uh, that I suppose they would take more advantage of your power uh, profile if you did. But honestly, having them set to known is just fine. And that's really it for this program, guys. There There is loads of other things you can do, by the way. Your memory, uh, your power. But to be honest, for flight simulation, that's really it. Now... As I say, the great thing about this program is its graphs. So if we minimize all this rubbish now that we've just opened, including process lasso, and we'll crawl our way through to the uh, sim. This is like inception, this is. Um, and we'll just quickly load up uh, a dirty flight here. Now, I am obviously recording this off the same PC that I'm about to go flight simming in. So the uh, frames might not be there. But uh, we shall just deal with that. Okay, so everything's uh, fully loaded up here. And uh, let's see, let's bring up Process Lasso. And as you can see, the cores, they're pretty much balanced, really, using just sort of uh, half and a half of each of the threads there. And our utilization, even though we've got everything running, and you can see it's all running here in the active thing. And you can actually see what's using what. And right now, OBS and P3D are my main two heavy CPU intensive. You can just see how much of the CPU it uses. It uses 25% of your CPU, guys. So, um, or 25% of mine anyway. So as you can see here, graphics card sitting between around 76. And CPU is around 50%. So let's uh, let's just quickly take this bird to the air, shall we? And uh, and we'll just what we'll do is I'm just going to put this uh, monitor here on the side, and we can actually monitor as we fly the the usage of everything really, and uh, and we can see out the window still, and you know move everything. Again, it might be a little bit stuttery because I'm using OBS on recording. Uh, usually, I've got that running off a different PC altogether. And so I don't really have to worry about that. So the odd study here and there, I'm not that bothered about. Um, I know it doesn't usually do this, to be fair. So One thing uh, to note as well, very important, go to all settings, go to gaming, and make sure game mode is switched off. If you turn that on, the sim will not like it, and you possibly could be getting quite a lot of stutters and lags. Uh, but yeah, running smoothly, 30 frames, uh, night lighting, full whack, uh, traffic as well actually. We should have some traffic down here. We should have some cars running about. There they are. Just about to see the cars here. That's the uh, Chris Bell's traffic pack as well. Running, which is a, a, a frame hitter really, to be honest. 
But uh, even with that and all the lights, uh, we're sitting pretty here at 30 frames. In Birmingham, in a city, uh, second biggest city in England, in fact, with UK 2000 as the airport. So, uh, where's the camera gone? Hello. Oh, we're going down. Right. At 360 miles an hour here. Just a little bit fast. But yeah, uh, CPU sitting just under 80%. Uh, and the GPU is sitting around 30%. I mean, if I wanted to, I could actually probably up my uh, graphical detail just a little bit more. But uh, to be honest, I'm using 7 out of 9 gig of my GPU memory that the sim will allow. So actually, I'm utilizing my memory very well in the sim. Uh, my 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 computer can do a lot more, but that I don't really want to push that. To be fair, that's fine. Um, CPU's getting nailed, but then again, OBS is in use, so I can forgive that one for the moment. But that would be usually between sixty and seventy percent um, without OBS running like it is. So yeah, that's how you do it, guys. That's how easy it is as well. Um, getting your CPU, getting your GPU. And getting your memory all singing a lovely sweet tune of, um, you know, making it really sort of uh, streamlined and making it so it's not bottlenecking at any one point is the secret, really, to getting your 30 frames or getting whatever frame rate you, frame rate you want, really. For me, it's 30 because I have a 4K display um, where I've locked my frame rate of my monitor to 30. And so I only need to achieve 30. And I look at that, I get smooth, silky smooth flights. Thank you for watching. Um, if uh, you need any other help, I'm always available in my Discord. Um, I don't really sleep that much, so basically, I'm free uh, whenever anybody needs me, 24-7. Um, if you have an issue or problem um, for the next month, I can actually help you. Um, I'm off furlough from work, so I've got nothing better to do but help people with their flight sim, and I'm glad to do it. Thank you for watching this. There's a whole playlist which I'll feature below uh, that actually helps you uh, maintain the frames in your in your sim um, and actually helps you run your sim uh, very well. Uh, go check out those videos. Subscribe to my channel, please. Give me a thumbs up. It really does help me out, trust me. And I shall see everybody in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. One hundred fifty thirty twenty ten